I'm good. I'm good. Praise the Lord. <laughs> good morning. God bless you. Welcome on the seventh day of July here, 2024. We are in Zurich, Switzerland, coming to you. I'm Pastor Curtis, coming from Resurrection Life Church. Amen. And we welcome you to our live broadcast. We have many videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, I don't know how many videos, but many hundreds of videos on our YouTube channel. You can go, go there and, and watch those. If you're on Facebook, we welcome you. Wherever you're from, from all over the world, we welcome you to our live broadcast. And it's an honor to have you join us. And we believe that God did not have you listen to us on purpose, but he wanted you to be here because there's some things he wanted to say to you. And today we're going to teach on a, a subject that is uh, um, something that we need to remind ourselves. Sometimes we know these things, but many times we let these things slip. And I know when we had this uh, virus for the last three years or so, that, that C word, I can't say the word, otherwise YouTube would, might uh, block me or so. But you know what I'm talking about, that, that thing, that thing. Um, when they had that thing, many, many Christians, now I saw a study in uh, America that said that almost up to 70% of the Christians uh, after the COVID, everybody say after, after, not before, after the COVID, they stopped coming to church, okay? And uh, I, I guess they're using the excuse that, hey, I might, I might catch something at the church and... Um, and I want to tell you that the enemy will always try to keep us out of the church, always. And some of your great, if you think with me, just think with me for a second. Some of your greatest battles or wrestling matches is on the Sunday morning before the service. When you are, the devil is trying to fight you not to come. And many times the devil wins <laughs> to many Christians. Because that day, he wants you to stay home. You hear what I said? The devil wants you to homeschool. <laughs> he doesn't want you to come to church and learn. And, and the thing is, I, 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 I want to talk about, and I, I'm sure I can get done all of these. I want to talk about 99, thing, 99 reasons why you should come to church. 99 reasons why you should come to church. You say, Pastor, are you going to finish all 99? All 99 today. I'm going to just breeze through them, okay? Okay, number one, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Hebrews 10, 25. This is not time to pull away, neglecting meeting together. As some have formed the habit, or they formed a habit of not coming to church. Now, anything is a habit, it only becomes a habit. People say after 90 days, something becomes a habit. You do something consistently for 90 days, it can become a habit. Well, in order for this, for to you to form a habit, there has to be at least, what is that, 12, 14 services, 12 Sundays in a row that you have not been coming to church. And then people wonder why their life is in a mess and why they can't get the help, and why nobody loves me, and nobody cares, and I'm all alone, and all of these reasons they talk, start talking, okay? So it says, in fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and urge each other onward as we anticipate the day dawning, or the day when Jesus comes, okay? So um, I and what I have observed is people, even people who do come to church, they're still not consistent, okay? And with God, consistency is everything, okay? Consistent, consistently, we, we see it in the life of Jesus. He consistently prayed. He consistently read uh, the scriptures. We know that because even when he was 12, he was reading the word. He consistently traveled. He consistently fed the four, consistently healed, he consistently encouraged consistently uh, demonstrated the love of God. So he was always doing this. It was not a, a one-off thing. He was so consistent. And um, when I, I think about myself, um, I have missed, I think, um, in my church this year, only two Sundays, maybe three Sundays, 
uh, and that was only because I was in another church teaching, okay? So I don't miss services because I need to be there. That is my happy place. I said church is my happy place, okay? And as we see the day of coming, what does that mean? Uh, when you, if you're a believer and you believe that one day Jesus is coming, right? When, when you believe that that day is coming closer and closer and closer, what he's saying here is come more and more and more and be more consistent and more consistent and more consistent, okay? And that's what we must do in order to see uh, some changes in our life. Um, number one, number one of 99, the Bible indicates uh, that we should come to church. That was the first one I just read, Hebrews 10, 25. Number two, you will have an opportunity to worship God. Most people, and even me sometimes, we don't worship God when we're not in church. You hear what I say? We don't worship God when we're not in church. We only worship when we're in church. Well, when you come to church, you have that opportunity to worship Him. Number three, you will likely have some of the uh, some of life's big questions answered. You come to church, the pastor prays, he preaches a sermon, and you say, how did the pastor know that? He didn't know. God showed him and told him to say that, and it gave you direction. It gave you a revelation. It's, you, you said to yourself, I have my answer. That is from coming to church. How many, you know, let me tell you a story, a true story. One year I was pastoring in Italy. We used to live in Italy. And I, it was, it was a Wednesday night service, and I had already had uh, about four or five of the, the wives of our church. They all came to me separately at different times, telling me how bad their marriage was and if I could do something for them. So, I mean, and then some of these come to, to my house uh, to make an appointment, to talk to me how, how bad their marriage was. So um, I did my best to counsel them and everything. And then one day, I, w I went on a three-day fast, so I didn't eat any food for three days. I'm praying uh, for the church and the plan of God and everything for all the members of the church. And all of a sudden, the Lord says, I, wanna, I want you to tell uh, these women who came to you who had marriage problems, tell them this tonight. So I wrote down everything God told me to tell them, and I'm writing, writing, writing. Oh, I said, even to myself, I said, this is going to be good for them. They're, this is going to help them. I come to church on Wednesday night, and you know what happened? Not one of the four women came. Not one. Not one showed up. Not one. And God gave a direct, express from heaven, fresh manna message for them, and they didn't come. Why do we come to church? You will likely have some of your big questions answered. Okay? Number four, the preaching of the Bible will help set direction for your life. You know, it was God. We, being a believer, being a, a Christian, God did not have to institute that we have to come to church. Think about that. I mean, it could be that we never had to come and we just meet at home or uh, meet in the street somewhere. But he instituted. He wanted us to come someplace together as a group. He wanted us to come. Amen? If you have a kid, a child, a teenager, especially a teenager, and you want to plan a family vacation, and, and there's always one or two teenagers who, who gripe and complain, I don't want to be, I want to go to Disney, I want to know. And the other teenager says, I want to go to the lake, I want to go to the lake. And the parents are just so frustrated because he wants, they want all the family to be there. And I'm the same way. I want the whole family to be together on Sunday because you're, you're not going to leave without receiving something from God. And not just that, one guy, um, and some of you guys know who I'm talking about, uh, uh, maybe a year or two ago, he came to church. He didn't really, he said, I was tempted to stay at home. He came to church and he had a financial need. Man, somebody gave him a thousand francs. He said that Sunday, I'm so glad I came to church today. Imagine that. And how many single women have missed their husband because they missed that Sunday that he was there? You're supposed to laugh. You're supposed to laugh. How many of you missed God sent your husband to the service on that Sunday? You never showed up. You're in bed, and you missed your husband because you didn't come to church. 
Okay, let's, let's keep looking. Up. You're looking at me really funny right now. They're preaching, uh, number five, you will probably make new friends. And we know that's true, right? Number six, I mean, when I was in the Navy. When I was in the Navy, everybody in the Navy who I, my department was working with, all, everybody in my department, we all said, even all this, it was 90% sinners, almost 95 were sinners. But I heard them say this. They say, they would always say on Friday, because there's a weekend coming, they always say, if you want a good girl, go to church. They all said that. They all knew, if you want a good girl, find one in church. Don't go to the disco. If you find a girl in the disco, yeah, it, it's, it's really iffy. If you want a good woman, go to the church. And they're sinners themselves, but they knew to find a good woman, go to church. Amen? Rama. Bible Training Center, we used to call it Rama Bridal Training Center because everybody, the women would go there to look for a husband, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's where you find a good husband. Amen? So many times you think it's not important to come to church. You don't know many times what you're missing. Amen? Number six, you'll probably see old friends, old friends, and you will. Number seven, being there is a sign of your dis discipleship. You're obeying the orders of God to don't forsake yourselves coming to church. Number eight, being there will encourage your pastors and leaders. Have you ever thought about that? If I don't come to church, my pastor won't be so encouraged. It's the absolute truth. If I don't come to church, Susanna won't be so encouraged. Susanna may be a little discouraged. Yes, it's true. If I don't come to church, uh, the pastors are not really that that uh, encouraged, 100%. But I think people are, are so focused on themselves, they don't think about the pastors. They think about just themselves, okay? Um, number eight, uh, number nine, you'll be encouraged in your walk with God. That's absolutely true. Number 10, you'll likely encourage other people in their walk with God. How many times I've seen some of you go to someone else and encourage them in their walk with God and say to them, you will be okay. You will be fine. Everything's fine. Just keep moving forward, moving forward. Don't stop. Don't be tempted. Don't give in to temptation. You can, you can be used to encourage other people. Number 11, if you're, in, if you're single, you may meet someone. Number 12, if you help, if it will help you define what you believe. It fortifies what you believe I and mean, strengthens what you believe. Number 13, uh, it will help you understand the Bible. I mean, the, the, you come to church to have the Bible explained to you by anointed teachers. Number 14, if you have kids, it will teach them to value God and the church. That's good, no? Number 15, people, will attend church, you, people who attend church usually live longer. If that, for no other reason, I want to live longer, come to church. I didn't make this up. You can Google it. Okay? People who come to church live longer. That's why uh, MedArt is 120 years old. You come to church all the time. Okay? When you come to church, you live long. Okay? Uh, it will give you, number 16, an outlet for service and ministry. Oh, pastor, uh, we need to do this. I say, okay, go. Go do this. Go do this. Go help someone. Go give an offering. Go shop. Go whatever. It helps you get into ministry. It helps you even discover your ministry gifts. Amen. Um, number uh, 17. It can help you develop personal leadership. I mean, how many people? Myself, I went to church. I was never a leader like this. But I watched in my church. I was an usher. I work with kids. I work with youth. And I, as, I, as I was faithful, leadership came on me. I learned how to be a leader. I learned how to lead, how to guide people. I didn't learn that because I was not born with that. That came from doing it and watching it. You only get these things from being in leadership uh, training exercises. Amen? Number 19 or number 18, you're, you'll sing inspirational songs that will carry you through the week. Have you heard a song here on a Sunday and still singing the same song on Thursday? Yes, you have. You have. Number 20, uh, number uh, 19, it will encourage you that God is good. If it doesn't, it should. 
simply God is good. Amen. Number 20, it will help you look outside of yourself. Now, all of these are why come to church? Um, number 21, it will pro provide an opportunity to give financially to those in need. That's true. Number 22, you will receive love from other people. That's true. I mean, I'm talking about genuine love. Genuine love. Amen. Um, number 23, you will be able to show love towards others. Yes. You will hear, 24, you will hear about the great things God is doing in His church locally and throughout the earth. That means, that means you hear other people give a testimony in church of the miracle God did for them. And that would encourage you and give you faith that God can do it for them. He can do it for me. Hallelujah. Number 25, you'll be prayed for. Nobody prays for the people more than we pray for our people here. We are always praying for you. Amen. That, you tell me, you tell me this. Do you know a pastor who prays in tongues for his people like your pastor here, your pastors here? We pray for you, not just in English, 99% in tongues, that God's will be done in your life, that the will of God, the plan of God, that everything works together for your good. Even if you're not faithful to come, we are still praying for you. Amen. Hallelujah. The only thing about that is there's a saying that's true. It says this, because I've, I've tested it. I, I did tests. Out of sight, out of mind. Out of mind. What does that mean? If, if you skip 12 Sundays, every Sunday you skip, the more you get out of my mind. The more I, and literally, sometimes you come back after 12 Sundays and say, what's your name again? <laughs> You've been gone so long, I forgot who you are. It's the truth, out of sight, out of mind. And if you're not in my mind, it's most likely you're becoming out of my prayers. It's the truth. You're in somebody's mind all the time, they're going to pray for you. You get you don't you don't you're not in the mind of someone, they don't pray for you. They're free, they don't even you're not even on their mind. Amen. Um number uh where are we at? Number 25. You'll be praying, no, 26, you'll be able to pray for others. Yep, that's right. We'll let you lay hands on others. Number 27, you'll, you're likely to hear and be encouraged by answered prayers. Number 28, you'll be able to give praise reports and share stories of God working in your life. Number 29, you'll be able to worship God with other like-minded people. Number 30, it's an opportunity to introduce a friend who doesn't know Christ. You can bring someone from work or your family member who doesn't know Christ to come to church. Amen. Um, number 31, you'll probably, you, you've probably got nothing better to do. Okay. Why come to church? You don't have nothing else better to do. Watching TV or sleeping in, they don't count as better. <laughs> uh, you hear what I'm saying? Amen. So in number um, 32, your family needs you to go. Number 33, it honors God. Number 34, because gathering is part of what is, it means to be a Christian. Number 20, uh, 35, because it's good to have your views and opinions challenged. Amen. Number 36, because we all need regular reminders of, of our position in Christ, and that's true. Number 37, it will help you acknowledge and confess your sins. That's right. 38, it helps you to be in the world, but not of it. Number 39, it will help you uh, end one week and start the next with the right focus. That's right. On Sunday, start. Sunday is the beginning of the week. Number 40, it's a break from work. Amen. Number 41, it will help you reorder your priorities. 42, it will, it's where your real friends are. And that's the truth. Uh, one day, yeah, I won't tell the story about that one bit. Um, uh, and Jesus said there's a brother or there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Amen. And many times your family will not get up out of the bed at three in the morning to come help you, but a friend will, especially if they're a friend in church. 
they will come to help you. Uh, many times your family, oh, because your family, get, get somebody else, I'm sleeping. I, ask me how I know, okay? Number 43, uh, it will help you put your life story into the grand narrative of the scriptures. Number 44, it will remind you that you have nothing to fear. I mean, imagine you coming to church and knowing, man, I have nothing to fear. God is, God is on the throne. God is alive. God is in my church. I have nothing to fear. Amen? Number 45, it helps you take focus off yourself and onto God. Number 46, it helps bring perspective and feeds the soul. Number 47, because gathering strengthens your faith. Number 48, the discipline of going will help you be disciplined across all areas of life. That's true. Number 49, it will allow for support in times of need. That's right. Uh, um, there are times that some, there are times in your life, maybe in your life, maybe it hasn't happened yet, where you will need someone to help you. Maybe you, you lost your job and you don't have food or you don't have money and, 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 and you come to the church, you're part of the church, and the church will, is, should be willing to help you as much as they can. Amen? But if you don't have that support, you can't get that help. Amen? Number 40, um, um, where are we at? Oh, yeah, four, number 50. Number 50, uh, it promotes stability in your life. Coming to church promotes stability in your life. I've heard parents, I've heard parents say this. They said um, their kids are now over 20. All their kids are over 20. And they said to me, I wish I would have made my kids go to church more. I wish I would have made my kids go to church and now the kids are not going nowhere near a church. They don't even want to have nothing to do with God, nothing to do with church. And if you would have come to church uh, faithfully, the child sees that stability. Every Sunday we go to church. There is no soccer. There's no or soccer. There's no football. There's no this and that on Sunday. There's no camping. There's no bike rides. No, we come to church every Sunday family, as a family. And here's the thing, when you train up a child, train, train a child in the way he should go, he will not depart from that training. And when I see, I, I can, I'm thinking of so many families right now who they were not faithful with their kids to come to church. And here's what Jesus says, Hey, to the parents, suffer not the little ones to come unto me. Don't forbid them to come to church to be with me. The kids want to, and here's Jesus, I want to be with your kids at church. Why are they home today? And so many par parents did not do that. And, and I, uh, ask me how I know I saw so many of them. Uh, number 51, it helps to promote a ha ha happy marriage. And that's true. Amen. Uh, it's family, because especially when the families sit together in church, man, kids don't forget that. You, it's, it's, it's ingrained to them as a family. You sit, oh, I can still see my mother in church. And man, we had 10 kids. Imagine you, uh, some of you are complaining about your kids not coming to church when, you're, when they're younger, because I have two kids. I have a, my mom had 10 kids, and we were in church every single Sunday. And I can remember sitting, and we didn't get to sit in the back. We had to sit in the front. Mom can't watch you in the back, but she can watch you in the front. So we all sat in the front. I met six boys, four girls. So we learned. To, to me, uh, being out of church is like, to me, a fish out of two waters. I'm telling you. Even when I'm on vacation, which is the only time I would approve of someone not going to church, I would say, if you're on vacation, I don't think it's a big sin not to find a church. I think when you're on vacation, it's okay to skip a Sunday or two, okay? Because you can come back and continue that. I think it's okay. I, I don't, myself, when I'm on vacation, I'm not looking for a church. I'm looking for the pasta and the fresh fish, <laughs> 
I'm looking for food, not looking for church, okay? So I don't think you have to go, go looking for a church on your vacation. Now, you can if you want to. There's nothing wrong with that. But I don't think it's a, a big thing if you miss that, okay? Um, number 52, uh, uh, it gives you something great to do with your kids. Coming to church, right? 53, it helps you to improve your self-esteem. 54, it helps you to, it helps your interpersonal skills. And that's true. Some people cannot find a date. Let's not even talk about a husband or wife. They can't even find a date because they did never learn how to socialize, how to talk to people just one-on-one -on -one because they never were part of a community of people where they could learn and practice with their friends and, and female friends and male friends. So they don't, they don't know how to talk. They don't know how to talk to the, that girl. They, oh, they like this girl so much. Oh, I like that girl. But they don't have any confidence in their speech and their speaking. They have no confidence that I'm bold enough to go to her. Even if they say no, they don't have confidence because they never learn in church or in a setting like this, how to be confident to approach someone and say, let's go out for a pizza tonight. And you'll be surprised how many people are afraid to do that. They just don't have the confidence. In church, you can get it. Even at the drinking coffee. After the, that's what I say. After the church service, don't be so in a hurry to run home. Talk to a, a member of the church. Drink a coffee with them. Learn what they like. It could be your husband, future husband. It's the truth. It could be your future wife. Yet you say, oh, as soon as the, the pastor says amen on Sunday, you got to go. I got to go, got to go, got to go. You may be missing something, even an offering. So don't do that. Number 60, where am I at? Uh, uh, yeah. It will, it will allow you to take action. Uh, oh, here you go. It will help you be a happy, no, no. Am I right? Is it 55, right? I'm 55? 55, okay. It will help increase your ability to cope with the trials of life, and that's true. Because the, the strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, okay? If you're, if you're strong, you should go to, to a weaker person and be able to help them and encourage them, okay? Uh, number 56, it will help you <clears throat> be a, help, a happy person. Something about going to church after the service is over, you feel good. You have made an accomplishment. You have done a good thing. 57, it, it will positively influence future generations. 58, it will provide you with an opportunity to share in communion. That's true. It will allow you to take an active role in missions work. That's true. It will help you be a better member of your local community. It will help you develop your children's self-confidence. Um, your children will learn the Bible. 63, it may keep you out of trouble. Yes. Amen. Going to church can keep you out of trouble. Now, I, I, have, a, I have a sad story. <clears throat> I, I have a, a true story. Um, one day I was flying to America. I went to Chicago O'Hare Airport. I was transferring to go see my family. And, so, and they called my name on the loudspeaker of Chicago O'Hare Airport. They said, Curtis Taylor, please come to the, the black desk. And I go to the black desk thinking, why are they calling my name? I mean, the whole airport, that's one of the largest airports in the world. They call my name. I go and, and a woman tells me the, that your cousin, kids, just had a wreck. All three of them were dead. And so I, I'm in Chicago now, and I'm, i got to still fly another three hours to where my parents are living. And I get there, and sure enough, my, my, my cousin, who we are same age, went to school, same grades, everything, best friends, and her, her kids uh, died in the car accident. And then she told me this. She said to me, she said, Curtis, that night, they were supposed to be in church. That night, they were supposed to be in church. If they were in church, they would have lived that night. So I'm not saying that accidents happen like this, but 
hey, they were supposed by mama's instructions, you guys go to church. And they didn't go to church. You know, they told me that car was cut in half. Something hit it. Man, it was it was terrible. I went to the funeral. There was over a over thousand people there. All of them were young because the kids were young. All the high school classmates, they were all crying. It was it was horrible. So um, that's what I'm saying. Ingrained it in your kids when they're young. Amen. Uh, number 62, it will, the children will learn the Bible. Uh, 63, it'll keep them out of trouble. 64, it will help give you, give you a sense of purpose. Uh, it will shape your vision of the future. It will give you eternal hope. That it give you eternal hope. Coming to church, you are reminded that one day Jesus is coming back. Amen. Um, it will help you know what you believe. 68. It will help you know what you stand for. 69. It will encourage creativity. Number 70. It will allow you to be disciplined, mentored, and pastored. Number 71. Because you'll learn about Jesus and have the opportunity to get to know him. I've known people who came to church and didn't know they had a gift of organization. They could organize a church dinner like nobody could. They had a gift. They didn't even know they had the gift. But they organized one thing and then they organized another thing in church. And instead, finally, they got a job out in the world being an organizer because they learned it in church. So many things just by volunteering doing this and doing that, you realize what um, talents that you have that you never even knew you had. Amen? Number 72, you go to church because you want to. I want to go to church. Number 73, it's a pleasant experience. It will give you the opportunity to express yourself in song. It beats staying at home and being alone. That's the truth. Number 76, you get to put your Sunday bet. Oh, yes. You, 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 you don't have to wear your skinny jeans. You get to wear. <laughs> you get to look like me today. Look, look, look how I look. I look nice today, huh? You get to look like me in church. Now, I know we're different, living in different times, but I'm telling you something. 25 years ago, no man went to church without a suit and tie. I'm telling you. And, and 40 years ago, no man went to church without a suit and tie and hat. You can forget it. They had it. It was part of your honor and your respect. Today, we wear skinny jeans. And I'm, even sometimes I, tell, I feel guilty sometimes of, of what I wear. Sometimes I wear what I wear because of light and heat and all this stuff, not because I'm not trying to dress. I like to dress nice. And I, 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 I heard... Um, uh, Pierce Morgan, I think most of you guys know him, Pierce Morgan said this the other day, his mother always told him, always wear a tie because one day you might be invited to the queen's house. And guess what? He literally went to and met the queen. He literally one day went and was able to meet the queen. And he, he said, you ever see Pierce Morgan? His name's Pierce Morgan, right, from England? You will never see him without a tie. He always has shirt, tie, and suit. And he said this, his mother told him, it opens up doors for you. And it's true. The way you dress, especially on an interview or when you're buying a house, or if you want to rent a house and you say, I want to rent this house, and there's 100 people in line, the guy or girl who's dressed the nicest has a more better opportunity to get that apartment than the one who dressed with skinny jeans. Believe me, it's the truth. Okay, 74, I will give you the, it gives you the opportunity to express yourself in song. Um, uh, so let's, let's go to um, uh, 77. You'll find acceptance. I, 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 in church, I don't know, it's very rare that you go to a church and someone or the church won't accept you because the church will, okay? Number 78, you'll be loved, true. 79, you can love others, yep. 80, real forgiveness is found there. Yep, 100%. Uh, the gathering of God's people will help draw you closer to God. Yep, you'll meet like-minded people, absolutely. Number 83, this should be number one, but they put it at 83. Jesus will be there. Hey! 
Amen. Jesus is there. Hallelujah. 84, it will remind you that you're not alone. It will help the process of sanctification. Growth, uh, uh, you'll likely learn something about God, the Bible, yourself, or others. 87, growth of the fruit of the Spirit will likely happen. 88, it will bring with it tangible and intangible blessings. Number 90, it's a declaration that you're a Christian. You're not going to church if you're not a Christian, right? 91, it will give you something interesting to talk about on Monday at work. Number 92, because you've been planted, will, because, because being planted will help your life to flourish, right? Number 93, it reflects a life lived beyond yourself. 94, it will bring joy to your life. Number 95, 95, I meant 95 and still have 10 minutes to go. You didn't think I could do it, see? You get to see miracles in church. Uh, um, 95, a miracle you need may come to pass. Number 96, you've been promising someone that you would go and it's time to make good on your word. Number uh, 97, why I go to church? Because it's the right thing to do. Number 98, because faith without works, oh, I like this one. Faith without works is dead. Number 99, it will literally change your life for eternity. And that's the reason why we go to church. So why we go to church this weekend? You'll be crazy not to go, especially with all these reasons. Be there. Be there. Go to church on Sunday. What is wrong with you? If they have a Wednesday night service, go to the midweek service. It even makes it a double dose. Amen. And so um, God wants us to go to church. He instituted. And I'm going to tell you something that's true. In the, in, when we go to heaven, we will be required to go to service in heaven. Just like the Israelites are required to go in the Old Testament uh, once a year um, to Jerusalem. They had to go to church all the time in their community. But once a year, all the churches together had to go to Jerusalem and meet. Okay? And so it's all about being with someone. Um, if you are, a, if you are a, a person today who lives in an apartment by yourself, I mean, no one lives with you. You live by yourself. And you know how lonely that can be. You know how uh, alone you can feel. You know how um, um, empty sometimes your house can feel because no one's there. And if that's the case, number one, try to find somebody to fill up, fill up that space that you have. You know, if you can find a husband or a wife, believe God for one. Um, if not, the, the second best thing is, is to um, um, get a, a roommate if you can find someone to live with. And the third one is get a cat. There's always somebody you can live with. It's the truth. Uh, you, you think I'm kidding you, but they said people who have cats live four years longer. I'm not, I read it. They live four years longer if you have a cat. There's something about, because people talk to cats. People talk to dogs. The dog is looking at what you say, 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 and they still talk like, there's, like they understand. No, dogs don't understand what you're saying. And, and when you're talking, they, the dog don't speak English or German. But uh, you can still communicate with the, the, that animal as much as you want. You know, so uh, it was never, God never intended for us to be uh, alone. Um, again, if you can find, if you're a roommate, if you don't have a roommate, try to find a roommate, even if you're older. Try to find someone who can help you split the bills. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Because when you, let's say you're not married, and you have a roommate, man, at least you can talk. At least you can laugh together. At least you can go somewhere together. At least you can shop together. At least you can go on a vacation together. At least you can do things together than being by yourself, okay? So there's all remedies that you can make, and it's just not the end of life because you're living by yourself, okay? So, and, and a lot of these things, our circumstances are temporary. They're not forever, amen? Okay, and with that, oh, the only thing to say is what? Go to church. <laughs> so he said, you say, go to church. Quit making excuses for not going and be consistent. Try your best to go to church 
42 Sundays in a row. Did you hear that? Oh, how can I? 42 services in a row. Yes, without missing one Sunday. Can you do that? Ha, the pastor does it. <laughs> sure you can. I do it every, every year. I, I, I don't miss Sunday. I don't miss. I, well, you because you're the pastor. I didn't miss when I was not the pastor. It, it, before I was a pastor, I was member of churches. I was always, I was always in, in the leadership because they said, this guy's so faithful, we've got to give him the job as usher. We've got to give him a job doing the coffee. We've got to give him a job. He's always there. We can depend on him. We know him, okay? And so um, even one day I was uh, usher in, in Ramah, and Brother Hagin was, um, and where they put me at to work at, this was a church of 5,000 members, where they put me to work at, I worked there right there where Brother Hagin always had to come in in the door. And uh, man, you know what an honor that was for me to work as an usher and to be able to look at Brother Hagin every Sunday, and talked to Brother Hagin. One day I went up to Brother Hagin. I said to him, I said, I don't know why I said this. I, I should never have said it to him, but I did. I said, hey, because Brother Hagin, if you don't know, he jokes a lot, a lot of jokes. I mean, one day a guy pulled up in front of his house, and Brother Hagin was wash, washing his car. And, and Brother Hagin, they started talking and laughing, and Brother Hagin took the hose and put it inside the man's car, and, and, and water got all over the place. Brother Higgins, I laughed so much. He said, he said, the man wasn't too happy, but I laughed and laughed. So he always joked. And so I said one day, I'm going to joke with Brother Higgins. So Brother Higgins came to the service on Sunday morning, and I pointed to the side and said, Brother Higgins, did you hear about last night? He said, well, I said, Mike Tyson got saved. He said, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? And I felt bad. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. I was just joking. I was just joking, you know. So um, you, learn, you learn these things. But I, I got in that position because of faithfulness. I went, I'm, I'll be honest with you. I went, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma has four seasons of weather and a lot of snow. I went to church on Sundays even when there was snow on the ground. Because I knew I had the responsibility, and my pastor needs me. My pastor needs me. If I don't be there, who is, I'm always thinking, who's going to take my place? My pastor needs me. That's how the mentality you need to have if you want to be faithful in church. My church needs me. Okay? Your bed needs you later. Your pastor needs you now. Amen? And with that, everybody says, Go to church. God bless you. We'll see you on the last broadcast. The next, not the last, the next live broadcast. <laughs>